our abstract is actually reporting the results where we have um, sent um, calibrators, which are a new type of a tool that are able to measure analytical sensitivity of immunohistochemistry as, as an assay to number of laboratories in Europe, United States, and Canada, and compared analytical sensitivity of different PDL1 assays uh, that are today available on the market and some of the laboratory developed assays for PDL1s also. Uh, what is really new about these approaches is not that, that somebody is looking at the analytical sensitivity in immunohistochemistry, but it is actually the novel thing is that we can actually measure the analytical sensitivity. It's not anymore descriptive analytical sensitivity that was the first and historical approach that we have used for all kinds of assays where we pick up some tissue, look at some cells and see whether they're staining or not. And if you know that they are weak expressors, we would think that we have a sensitive assay. This is actually revolutionary because it uh, measures the number of molecules uh, that uh, per cell that uh, this any assay, you know, any immunohistochemistry assay can detect. And we know that PDL1 comparison of PDL1 assays for their interchangeability has been done kind of extensively and it's summarized in meta-analysis uh, publication in modern pathology. And overall, um, there is agreement that there are differences and some of the assays are more similar than the others. Uh, and all of these things like about interchangeability and anal analytical performance and the sense overall sensitivity of the assay were done indirectly by looking at a large number of cases and seeing whether we are getting similar results with these different assays. What we've done here, we actually measure directly. So you don't need a large number of cases. You don't need the hundreds of them or 50 positive, 50 negative, whatever the guidelines may be. You simply use the slide with calibrators, you run the test and you get the number. And that is, that is really great because that is a, a way how it's actually done in the rest of laboratory medicine uh, where, um, where methods are quantitative and where this has been possible to do forever. This is new though for immunohistochemistry, the immunohistochemistry is qualitative assay. And even if we measure now uh, analytical sensitivity, it's still, um, still a, a, a qualitative assay, it's not quantitative assay, but at least we can measure what is our low limit of detection. And that's a huge thing. And we can also observe whether now we can really see um, what's the performance of different assays and how they compare to each other. And not surprisingly, actually, although the previous evidence was indirect, now with direct evidence, we show that the most sensitive assay that are of, of the kit that is FDA approved is SP263 followed by 28.8 and 22C3, which are very similar. And the least sensitive, uh, well, much more, much less sensitive test is SP142. Uh, so there was no surprise, but it's good to have this kind of um, uh, concordance between the measured results and, and indirect results obtained by, by multiple laboratories and large number of cases. So uh, again, in the summary, what is new about this is that we can directly measure the performance of the assay. And we can also look at the dynamic range of different assays. So we could see that some of the assays have very narrow dynamic range and some of them have a little bit larger. And that is also important when somebody is deciding whether certain biomarkers should have narrow or more wider range depending on the clinical applications. And I can see that as being used widely even for diagnostic uh, biomarkers, uh, prognostic biomarkers as well, especially it should be used for predictive biomarkers and in proficiency testing programs, it should be used widely.